Hello and welcome back to another episode of Unstuff America. I am your host, Andrew Mellon, and I'm here with my co-host, Debbie Black. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so, Debbie, what's been on my mind for the last couple of weeks has been multi-generational hiring, because as you know, here at AMI, at Andrew Mellon, Inc., we are expanding our staff. We're bringing on a new customer service rep who's also going to be uh, an EA for me, an executive assistant. We're bringing on a business development director, and um, we're uh, trying to grow the staff. I mean, I'm going to take try out of the. I'm going to take try out of that sentence. We are growing the staff and the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it because I'm dealing with the very same thing at my day job. Um, I'm hiring for two new salespeople. Um, and it's been, um, it's been an adventure for me. How about you? Have you had anything new and challenging this time around that you didn't find previously? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, certainly one of the biggest challenges has been trying to find the right place to go fishing. And once we are fishing, to then have the right bait on the hook. Well, I'm just going to play out this metaphor. And also to... Uh, to make sure that we're actually catching the right fish, right? So the biggest thing that I did differently this time was to delegate all of this to my COO. She has been, um, she's been driving this entire process and really keeping me out of it, which has been thrilling. Uh, not nerve wracking in that I'm worried I have complete confidence in her ability, but because it's new, it has been, uh, it's been challenging to be at arm's length with the process while it unfolds, you know? Sure. And I, I think at your job, when we were talking before, you had said really that you are doing this yourself, that you don't, you don't have a COO who's running this search for you. You're doing it yourself. No. And the company that I work for is, a growing company so they don't have the processes in place uh, that maybe the companies that I worked for previously had. So without those processes in place what I mean what did you did you create the process are you spitballing it and just winging it without a process what are you doing? Well first I tried spitballing it <laughs> and um, it didn't work yeah it didn't work. <laughs> So let, listen to the uh, note to the readers, right? When you are when you don't have a system in place and you think you're going to spitball the system, <laughs> probably you will be disappointed in your results. Yeah, winging it just doesn't doesn't do the job. So I had to really sit down and think about it. I had to really sit down and think about what's different here than what I had worked with previously. This is a new industry for me. Right. Okay. Um, previously, I was able to hire more senior people. Okay. Um, and I had a community to lean on. Wow. Okay. So, uh, new industry, uh, m more senior people right. were typically your, your target audience. Uh, and, uh, you had a community going back to the fishing hole metaphor, right? You had a, you had a community that you knew well. So you were fishing in a hole where you had been, where you, where you live and you also were looking for talent as well. Absolutely. And if I didn't know you, somebody I knew knew you. Right, you know, or did business with you, or knew what it was like to work with you. So Got it. So there was a lot of familiarity there, and here this is all. I mean, it's the wild west. You don't know anything. It is absolutely the wild west. And then I was also in a position where I was forced to hire brand new, right out of college, no experience, no sales experience, no very little limited work experience. Um, you know, young with in sales we call rookies. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, well, and it's curious, right? So, I mean, in some ways our roles have reversed because mm -hmm. historically I have hired younger folks um, who had experience, but the biggest thing they had going for them, I would say, was enthusiasm for the brand. They love the idea of organizing, simplifying, sustainability. I mean, the wheelhouse of what we do was had them on fire, mm -hmm. uh, but possibly being an executive assistant to a solo, a historically solopreneur, right? I mean, as we grow the business, I'm no longer a solopreneur, but I am used to doing everything. I was the chief bottle washer. I was the CEO. I was the service provider. I was the service creator. I had to do everything. And as we grow and we bring more people onto the team, I don't have to be doing all of those things. And it's been a learning curve for me to figure out what to let go of what what 
one of my mentors says, you know, what are you uniquely brilliant at? And let's be certain that managing people and hiring people is not my unique brilliance. <laughs> Okay. So again, enter Alice, the COO, and being able to say, you take this, you run with this, you create the system. Because I don't, I don't, what I knew, right, another mentor told, told me, right, if you do what you usually do, you'll get what you usually get. I didn't want what I usually got, right? I mean, and I've, I mean, I've had some great assistants uh, since, since I first started hiring assistants in 2012. I've had some wonderful people work with me and they're not here today, right? For whatever reason, right? They moved on. They, 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 the job didn't match them. Ultimately, uh, the health things came up for one of them. I mean, all different kinds of things have occurred. But overall, as the person who was here, it became clear that I didn't want what I usually got, which was somebody who either didn't have the skills, didn't have the stamina, or um, didn't take ownership. And that was a big thing for us was being clear that whoever we hire next, for me to be able to do what I do and live in my unique brilliance, we need people who are kick-ass at what they do, right? Not people that I have to be kick-ass with them or for them. I get to be kick-ass by myself over here. I mean, in relationships, but right. I get to do that. And they get to be kick-ass and take ownership of their departments, right? Because they're building the department until they got here there was no department mm -hmm. right which is similar to you as well right i mean as the as the queen of sales you are you're building the department around you beneath you with you correct yeah. correct and and i had to hire for a completely different skill set like what you were saying i don't want to hire for potential i need to hire for a proven track record right i had to hire for potential I had to look at it and say, I mean, it's really, we are really coming at this from different angles. It'll be interesting to see what we have to say to each other after we have a little bit more experience with our teams. Right. right. Well, I think next week we're going to talk, we're going to drill down into um, what the hiring process has been like for you, what it's been like for us. Uh, I think you're a little further down your pipeline. I think you're actually yes. working with those folks, right? And we're mm -hmm. just about to make our offers and... Um, and it'll be interesting to compare notes yes. and see how uh, not only our, our micro processes, but also how depending on the seniority, the maturity, even the generation of the people that we're hiring, how that's going to impact the choices that we're making, the onboarding process, and hopefully the results that we're going to get. Absolutely. I, I can't wait to compare notes. I really can't. And it'll be interesting to see if if the things that I'm experiencing are things that you experienced previously right. and vice versa. Yes. Yeah. Well, great. So everybody, you can tune in next week uh, for part two of this conversation around multi-generational hiring and onboarding and senior, not so senior people. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Unstuff America. We'll catch you back here next week.